Hello, Church of Our Savior. It's Wednesday, March 25th. I don't know how much I like communicating with you this way, but I'm grateful that I can, and hopefully we are all becoming more familiar with the digital universe we are now inhabiting as a parish. Certainly more and more of our parish programs are going online, and that's a good thing. So last week, Refresh and Thirst both met on Zoom and will continue to do so. Uh, this past Sunday, in addition to our regular Sunday video, we also began offering a children's Zoom time. And tomorrow, uh, the Men's Bible Study and Exploring the Word Bible Study will also start meeting on Zoom. I'm grateful for the technology that makes that possible and grateful that so many of you are willing to jump in as we discover new ways of being the church in this challenging time. Thank you so much for all that you are doing to keep us connected as a parish. I did want to say a couple of things about our food ministries that are ongoing. Those ministries are vital to who we are as a parish, and I did want to touch base about them. The food pantry is open three times a week as usual, but we have changed the, the way we the way we do things. So when our clients come now, they, they don't get out of their car. Instead, they stay in the car and one of our parishioners goes and speaks to them through the car window. And then we load up bags and we put them directly into the trunk of their cars. That way we minimize any kind of contact and any kind of touch. Uh, the Salvation Army teams are still meeting, but instead of cooking a hot meal at the Salvation Army on Friday night, we are preparing bag lunches, which will then be distributed at the Salvation Army. Grab a bag went on temporary hiatus when the schools closed down, but the need persists. And so we've been in touch with the Agner Hurt Elementary School staff. And so now we are gonna be packing bags and delivering those bags on Friday as per usual. And staff members from Agner Hurt will be delivering them to the homes of the children in need. In all these things, we're practicing social distancing and doing all that we can to make sure that our parishioners stay safe and the people that we serve stay safe while we continue to meet a very pressing human need. And again, I'm just thankful for the many parishioners that are making that happen. Last night at 8.30, we had our first Zoom Compline, and it was great to log on and to see so many of your faces on the computer screen as we offered the service of Compline together. Uh, I loved it, but I also had mixed feelings about it. On the one hand, it was terrific being able to see all of you. But on the other hand, it reminded me of how much I miss you and how much I miss the times that we can be together. You know, we, we take those times for granted, except now when we can't have them, certainly I, I'm missing you and I'm missing, I'm missing those times. And I'm reminded of the importance, the centrality of actual physical presence and physical touch. We are, we're gonna emerge from this time and when we do so, hopefully we're all going to have a heightened appreciation for the community that we share here at Church of Our Savior. But I hope that we also have a renewed appreciation for, a renewed understanding of the sacramentality of human touch, of human contact, and how vitally central the incarnation is to our faith, God becoming flesh. Speaking of the incarnation, uh, today is March 25th. It is the Feast of the Annunciation, that day in the church year when we remember the angel Gabriel coming to Mary, this young woman, and telling her that she will conceive and bear the Son of God. And Mary's words in reply have echoed down through the centuries. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. 
Let it be with me according to your word. Jesus is God becoming flesh through Mary. But the God who was at work through her is still at work through us today. You know, Mary has been venerated from the very beginning in the life of the church, but it's really crucial to remember that that veneration begins with an ordinary person saying yes to God. Believing that God would enter into her ordinary life to do extraordinary things. And as such, Mary is truly an icon for us. Because the God at work in her has not stopped being at work and continues to be at work in us. The word that became flesh through Mary continues to become enfleshed in our world in the body of Christ. And that love coming into a broken world continues to be expressed in the lives of ordinary human beings through us. For that to happen, we don't need to be especially holy. We don't need to be especially devout. We just need to be willing. Willing to trust that God can use even us to be Christ bearers in the world. So as we practice our social distancing, as we care for each other, sometimes in new and different ways, as we continue to pray for each other and for our world, I ask that we all trust that we can be Christ bearers, that God can continue to enter the world through us and in our ordinary lives to do extraordinary things for us to be Christ bearers. May those words of Mary be our words as well. We are the servants of the Lord. Let it be to us according to your word. In that spirit, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Pour your grace into our hearts, O Lord, that we who have known the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, announced by an angel to the Virgin Mary, may by his cross and passion be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We will be in touch soon. Until then, God loves you. I love you. Peace.